Welcome back. We are kicking tires again. When we were at the RV show, what, two, three weeks ago, we noticed that off-road capable trailers are becoming very, very popular. So we are here at Paris RV in Payson, Utah. It's a brand new dealership that just has, holy crap, a ton of RVs. But they have kind of the pinnacle in off-road capable trailers, and that's a Black Series. These are an Australian made or based um, RV that it's supposed to be able to go off-road. So let's look at it and see what makes it unique. There are several different models they have here. This is the 15, HQ15. Then we have a 17 behind it, and then a bunch of 19s. And the 19s are the ones that stand out the most to us. Uh, that kind of middle ground area. I think there's a 21 over here as well, but we're gonna tour through the HQ19. Before we get started too much, I know I'm gonna forget some stuff. There are so many things that are different on these RVs as compared to most other American made, but hopefully I don't get too much wrong. First thing that stands out on these Black Series is their rock slider. All the way around, protecting your front, back, keeping you from, when you're in those off-road conditions, getting, smacking that back end or that front end, going through those ditches and ruts and rivers and all those sort of things. As we come around, right here, nice little just kind of fold out tabletop. We have a plug right here. So you can plug in, you could have, you know, your little portable cooktop right out here. Just a nice little tabletop if you need it. And we all need tabletops at different times. So pretty cool. Has locks. That way you can make sure that stays up there. Right down here, fully independent suspension. If you're going to be going off road, you, you want the independent suspension. It just allows you to get this to places that you couldn't if you had the solid axles going all the way across. It does have big knobby off-road tires to give you a little bit thicker sidewall. That way you aren't getting them punctured on the rocks and things like that as, as you take this out to the desert or up in the mountains or wherever you're heading to. Not only that, but right back here, they even come with mud flaps. If you're gonna run these big knobby tires, it's important to have mud flaps as well. That way you aren't throwing rocks at the people behind you and all that sort of stuff. So yet again, they're making sure that this is off-road capable and built the right way, or at least from what we can see. Looking at the exterior, off-road quality, made so it's not gonna scratch and, you know, as you're going through the trees and the brush and all those sort of things, it's gonna hold up way better than most other fiberglass units. So they're just, yet again, Australia's thinking a little bit differently on that. The door right here, it's a little bit unique. Different latch than we're used to on most RVs made in here in the United States. And then, so it has this, thin exterior, then you have this caged um, screen door. With the screen door set up like this, huge amount of ventilation, and that's a big thing throughout this whole trailer. The way the windows operate, the door, ventilation is a big thing. Rather than a lot of RVs that the windows open this much and your screen door is only the top portion, or you have that stupid little slider thing, all those sort of things. So, seems pretty nice. I like it. Right up top, you have your awning. Sorry, this trailer's not plugged in or have, doesn't have battery. So we aren't able to put out the awning, but instead of having legs come down the side, it just scissors out. I don't know how it hold up in the wind, but it's a unique design and it looks a lot cleaner than having those big legs come down the side of your RV, especially when you're walking and those are out and you end up walking right into them, which I don't know how many of you have clotheslined yourself on your awning legs. I have. I had no idea this came on the Black Series. This all pulls out. It is one huge... Oh, sorry. I need to fold this up so it's not bad. Huge kitchen area. So this slides all the way in. You have your sink, cooktop. I mean, just... It's just massive. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this on an RV. This is made by, it has your Dometic cooktop right here. So you have your two burners, 
every drawer on a black series latches and they have good quality latches so that when they're latched they're latched they aren't coming open on you when you don't want them to so you have your sink drawers if you watch any of our other videos we aren't the biggest fans of outdoor kitchens but if they were like this we we would use it this is things huge and usable crazy so nice little extra space there even in case you didn't have enough space yeah <laughs> one thing i am noticing is all the rollers and latches really work well a lot of times when we come and kick tires they haven't went through their pre-service inspections those sort of things so some of the things aren't really working yet which i don't know why elkhart or other places send them out not working but they do everything seems to be working on this latches all the way down all of them are keyed as well i would hope that they're all the same key that way you don't have 15 keys to do everything on this but down here all the way through pass through storage pretty good for an rv this size to have that much storage space you can see some of the stuff already in it you got your power cord and the tube and all that sort of stuff rock sliders right up front aluminum for your two propane tanks and it looks like i don't know for sure but i think you could probably put some bigger propane tanks in i i prefer a bigger propane tank but um, they come with these two standard, I think these are five gallons, so. Another standout, when we got out here, we're like, what the heck is going on? So you have your plug for your truck. Then you have this other gob of wire. And this is so, this one here is so you can operate your power jack, gray on gray. Well, I guess it would go that way, that way it's plus on plus, okay. Gray on gray. This black one, you plug in so it'll actually charge the batteries while you're going down the road. It doesn't charge just through the regular seven pin like other RVs. I guess that's just an Australian thing. Then right here, you actually have a brake. It probably really helps stabilize the whole trailer when you're camping. Pull that brake and those wheels aren't gonna rock back and forth that little bit that we always get wherever you camp and no matter how you block your tires your wheels are gonna wiggle a little bit not a bad idea plus when you get somewhere just pop the brake you aren't worrying about blocks nearly as much now i'd still recommend using blocks but yeah then you have your articulate articulating if i can say the word hitch right up front so when you're towing down the highway you keep this little part down so that way it doesn't art it holds in place but when you get off road you flip this up I don't know if I have enough strength, but it'll articulate. 180 degrees is what they said. Plus this slides in and out a little bit. So down the freeway, you just lock that in. That way everything's nice and stable. Switching sides, the frame. This is a galvanized dip steel frame all the way through, fully boxed, really nice, looks really clean. And I think it would hold up to the elements so much better. You aren't gonna get that rust and all that sort of stuff that you usually get on your frame. When we got out here, Kara asked, what the heck is this? The little rack in here and this extra tank. The rack is for your extra water cans, the jerry cans, that sort of stuff. But then it has this different tank over here. And I'll let Kara come around so you can see that. On first thought, I, on first thinking, I thought this was- Hydraulic? Hydraulic or? fluid, uh, where it's feeding down to something but the furnace actually runs on diesel so this is a tank for diesel to run your furnace and that sort of stuff i don't know if it runs the water heater but the furnace for sure so you're burning less propane because your furnace is running on diesel interesting never seen that before coming down the side right here we have your i think this is the fresh water port and uh, well they're both fresh water ports. This is the drinking water port, and this is the fresh water non-drinking port. At least that's what they told us. Uh, the HQ15 actually has it labeled above theirs, 
I don't know why the 19 doesn't, but it doesn't. If you're ever behind one of these going down the road, you've noticed how cool they look. You have your two spare tires back here, which based on RV tires blowing out, this might not be a bad idea for all RVs. You have your bike mount right here. So this big hitch, so you can fit your bike rack and it's up off the ground instead of dragging on every curb that you go over, which we've seen people doing that with their motorhomes, dragging their bikes down the road, all that. Now this whole thing can be removed if you don't want it back here. The dumb part though, it takes your license plate with it. <laughs> Everybody has an oversight somewhere. Now this trailer empty is about 5,000 pounds, fully loaded, it's about 9,500. So it has a payload of over 3,000 pounds, which heck, that's more than most fifth wheels have for their payload. So this thing can carry an insane amount inside of it. When most trailers this size, you maybe have 1,500 pounds payload. Yet again, showing that it's a little bit overbuilt, which they all should be. Typically, you hear things in the RV industry like, well, it's built to industry standard. When the industry standard is that doesn't matter. This thing, not built to industry standard. One of the scary parts about taking RVs off-road is what happens when you get stuck because you're towing an extra five to 9,000 pounds down the trail, you might get stuck. Back here, you have two of these shackles on both sides. They're rated at 10,000 pounds each. So if you get stuck and you have to call Matt's off-road, he can hook onto these and he can get you out. Uh, 10,000 pounds each, that's just, that's crazy. <laughs> As we go around, it's, they're built just so different. The black tank is actually on the back of this one. So it's just right under your bathroom. It's fully boxed aluminum underneath it to protect it from rocks and that sort of stuff. But it's just interesting that it's actually on the back side. As we crawl underneath, you'll see that they do not enclose the underbelly on these. I guess in Australia, it's summer all the time. They don't have to unclose it. But if something breaks, it's actually easy to get to. You may have watched our video where we had to get our RV underbelly fixed and it's not easy. So this not too bad of an idea. So as I go underneath here, you can see you have your water tank right here all protected and supported. Pretty dang cool. But you have access to all of your lines going every direction, way better than dropping the whole underbelly out. So if you have to work on something down here, you don't have to drop that whole underbelly thing. This is just a little bit easier. So straight off going into this trailer, you notice there's no steps out. That's because they work off of power. You can't just pull them out like the old school ones or the big ones that pull down. Not gonna work unless you got power. All right, let's check out the inside. So straight off, you are walking right into your, I guess your master area, your sleeping quarters. There are cupboards and countertops and overhead as well. Ugh. So getting into here is kind of a chore. I had to climb over a little step right here. <laughs> and just kind of weasel my way up here trying to avoid hitting my head but you know what if you're taking this thing off road uh i shouldn't complain about the luxury of the sleeping quarters <laughs> be grateful that i actually have somewhere to lay my head so let's flip around we'll show you the rest of the trailer I'm seeing overhead, you've got some access that I cannot figure out. There we go. Screen. It's a little bit taller than you are. Yeah, it's a touch tall for me, but it looks like... It has this little... I hate pull on stuff too much. 
Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, it's on hydraulic struts. Oh. So in this case, you don't have your fantastic fan or your fan at all. You just have direct air coming right in with this option of popping this window up. But then you can close your screen. Yeah, if you want the shade, you can close that for shade. You've got screen to help with bugs or whatever may be. It does get a little dirty though. You can see. Yeah, it. you might want to vacuum that off every once in a while every or once something. Once in a while, but yeah. that's kind of a nice thing, especially if the wind's coming in from that way. Uh, you know, you don't really think about when you're looking at your, your fans and how much airflow you rely from those. This is a great option that gives you direct airflow as well. And a little light. I mean, that's a perfect little skylight yeah. for some. Yeah, it's really nice. Needed light. I really like that it's on hydraulic struts too. Mm -hmm. Their windows are really handy, I am finding. Uh, I just had to do a little uh, test on them. So you've got four latches, push button in, twist, And then it's a one push out as far as you want it to go and then a one push back in you also have your nightshade blackouts and you have your screen from the bottom which is kind of nice because the rollers don't rollers don't always cooperate <laughs> let's say um, and so this is really nice. You just have direct access up, down, and you can close them back up. <laughs> of course, you've got your little entertainment TV center here. Above, you've got your microwave if need be. Down below, you've got your sink station. Give you a nice little drain area right there if need be cabinetry it looks like an old rustic barn door but it's got a nice smooth it's shiny nice glossy finish to it the closures on these are a there's a little latch right here push that down to open it and then you can pull it so you're not gonna lose anything out of these cabinets unless you take one heck of a big bump these are not going to open and that goes for everything your drawers your big cabinets just give you a little peek inside all these so we mentioned there was that second drinking water faucet it is a filtration a pretty heavy duty filtration system that it's going through for your drinking water. Continuing to through our kitchen, really nice cooktop, oven below. <laughs> Not a huge size, but it'll get the job done. Really nice cover on this, shiny black, but you also have this one that just hides everything it gives you that nice cooktop surface for you. Fridge right here, it's basically hidden. It's the same finish as all the woodwork in the trailer, so it's not like a big eyesore for you. It is just your little small RV sized, but it'll get the job done. On this side, you have your your table set and your your bed below. Uh, these cushions, pretty nice. I mean, these are like almost designer pillow style cushions. Big enough for two people, maybe two littles. But this table, let's show you how it works. Flip this little tab right here and it is telescoping. And you've got your bed just like that. Now to raise this up, all I'm going to do is flip this 
all on its own. That is slick. <laughs> Other side of the trailer, really big window, and you're gonna get some serious airflow with this one. Between the kitchen and the dining, you're gonna get a lot of airflow just coming directly right in. I am seeing a little LED strip along there, giving you, I guess, maybe some nighttime light or just some ambiance. You get a sound system. You've got a Dometic above your head, an AC. So in case you do get into that really hot weather <laughs> and you're sick of the airflow coming in, uh, you do have that AC for you as well. Jumping in the shower, I'm five, two, three, uh, not a lot of room. That <laughs> uh, does have a sliding door that tucks back in here. Uh, shower, what else can I say? <laughs> Removal head, that helps for those tall people. Soap dish, standard shower right there. A little bit different shower check than when Kara's in here, a little bit wider. So it's not huge, but I do have enough headroom. I'm 5'10". Uh, most showers now have a big dome to get that extra headroom, but I mean, if you're 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 it's getting a little tight. You might be crouched a little bit, but what well, is what it is. The rest of the bathroom here, you've got really nice towel rack. So your door, to close you up is sliding door, pop that into place if need be, slide it back over, lock it back into place for travel. Toilet here behind you. It is a porcelain, that's nice. So this little cubby, my friends, is a washer. <laughs> so when you're out roughing it, you can have clean clothes and it's actually a fairly decent sized little washer I mean it's a it's that deep so if you're gonna wash make sure you have extra water right next to this washer is, is a very nice basin I mean you could wash a small dog in this if you wanted nice big space it is lifted up above the counter so it might be hard for the little ones to get their hands washed but very nice backsplash there isn't a backsplash it's all a mirror which i don't mind you could have room for two people standing here getting ready whatever need be you also have this one that pops out it's got a light in it if you want electric toothpaste and toothbrush holder you don't typically have a toothbrush holder when you're roughing it. Also nice drawer space down below. And these are kind of interesting. They kind of bow out in a metal versus a wood. And also a touch of space there, but most of it's in this drawer space below. These are on a nice strut system. You almost have to hold on to them going up or else they just flip right up on you. I ha would have to get used to not just slamming something shut. You almost have to like push the button open, push the button close. It's a little bit different, but you would soon get used to it. Another nice window back in here as well. <clears throat> so if you are looking for a Black Series, I think Paris would be a great place to come. They've got several models here on site. We mentioned the HQ 15, 17, 19, 21. <laughs> so it's a good opportunity to tour all the differences between these Black Series units. Uh, we just want to thank Paris for letting us come and looking at their brand new facility and seeing their new showroom. If you have any questions, we'll have all their information down below for you. 
what else can I say, guys? Thank you for catching this video. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll catch you later.